My guest today, uh, let's see now, she's a film actress and she has uh, her own business. And yeah, she really loves what she's doing. You know, I tried acting before and I've done some um, student films, which I so enjoyed. Anyway, welcome to Small Talk. Any and all are welcome here to come and chat with me. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode. And I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Elizabeth McCarthy. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Hi, thank you for having me on, Nancy. It is my pleasure, for sure. Now, you're a business owner, is that right? As well as a performer? Yes, I'm a, I'm a film and television actress. In fact, I have three shows on right now. I'm in the first episode of Peacemaker on HBO. Okay. Um, my a movie that I'm in that is number eight on Netflix in Canada and number 10 in movies on Netflix, ah. uh, Love You to Death with um, Marsha Gay Harden. Okay. And, and Garfield Wilson, who's from here, he's a fantastic actor. Um, and I'm also in a recent episode of Nancy Drew, the... Um, Spellbound juror. So you can wow. catch me on TV. Well, good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I also own a, um, I own a, uh, it's a communications company. Um, mostly social media is where it was my forte. And it's called EPL Social Marketing, which stands yeah. for Ethos, Pathos, and Logos, which is the three pillars of communication. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's just get back to the acting for a bit. Uh, when yeah. did you first start acting? My first acting job, actually, my next door neighbor uh, was a producer and he um, was shooting commercials and um, I was probably about 16 at the time. And he asked like his kids and the next door neighbor kids, which I was to be in this commercial. And yeah. that was the first time I ever worked in the film industry. And that's like, I thought, I really like this. I want to do more of this. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. I was just saying before, I, I do a little opening before this part. And I'm just saying how I did some student films and it was just so much fun, really a lot of fun. Uh, so now how do you get those, those wonderful parts? I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who aspire to be actors, right? And they don't get nice roles or whatever happens, but you had some re you have some really nice roles. Yeah, I've been really lucky and I've worked with some amazing directors and like John Cena, like such a nice man. Um, and uh, like, well, how do I get, I have a really good agent. Oh yeah. That... Uh, I have an excellent agent. I'm with Lucas Talent and with Deb Mahood. Um, and that is the right fit. Uh, and I studied for a long, long time. Um, I went to full-time theater school for almost five years. Oh, and man. I'm always continuing training all the time. Like, right. I, I don't think you can ever stop. Uh, one of the fallouts of the pandemic is that actors had to start putting their auditions on tape. Uh, but that did give you the opportunity to have more time with the script and flesh it out and get, get it to look the way you want it. Um, I have a buddy that I work with in um, my core bubble during the pandemic. Her mm -hmm. name is Kelly O'Byrne. She's an actress. She has so many credits. She's worked on so many shows. So I was blessed enough to have her in my core bubble and a year of going over acting scenes with her and fleshing them out and finding different choices and ways of the nuances in the script um you get better and better and better every, the more you do it right. um and I think the more you do it if you really enjoy it the more you fall in love with it so um good agent and keep studying are there other actors in your family uh yeah um th there is um but I'm I'm here in Vancouver, I'm the one that mostly does it. Okay. So now let's talk about your business. When did you start that business? Well, when I was in my 40s, I decided to go back to university uh, about two years after my son did. <laughs> and actually, we were going to school at the same time. <laughs> Terrible for him. Um, and I used to joke around with him because uh, we, we made a decision that in the hallways, uh, we would just kind of acknowledge each other, right? Because he didn't want people to know he, he was, <laughs> that I was, but I'm like, I don't want people to know that you're my son. They're going to know how old I am. <laughs> but I joke around because uh, a lot of his friends actually had classes with me, which okay. I think he hated. <laughs> and I used to joke around that if I saw him at the end of the hallway, I'd be like, Holly, Holly, it's your mother. I love you. Holly, <laughs> look at me. He's so handsome. How is he single? So, but I never did do that. I wanted to though. <laughs> it would have been so much fun. <laughs> fun. Uh, so I went back to school uh, in my forties and 
Um, I left in 2018. I graduated. Uh, I, so I left with three degrees. I have two associates degrees from Langara, mm -hmm. uh, one in social sciences um, and the other in English. And then with that, I transferred to Capilano University and I have a bachelor's in communications. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So, Good for you. Yeah. So, okay. And then out of, out of 2018, from there, I, I started my own business. No, no, that business, like what drew you to that particular, particular type of business? Because I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I like to communicate. I really like people. Mm -hmm. um, and well, some people. Um, and <laughs> and um, it just seemed like a natural fit for me because I was so interested in anthropology and sociology and what makes people tick and how societies mm -hmm. run. Uh, and I love the English language. I love reading. I love books. Um, and not only that, I like um, authors from many different other countries as well. Like I love books from the Spanish culture. Um, and I just, the love for that led me to communications and at CAP University, there's different streams that you can do in communications. And I love technology. I love computers. I had my first computer when I was about 11. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I was 13 at the school I went to, we were doing most of all our work on computers, um, which is a little ahead of the time. I'm a Gen Xer, not a lot of Gen Xers had that experience. I was very lucky to and privileged to have that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so finding out that I could communicate, that I could use the love of language, communications, people, and technology, and combine them, I mean, there was just, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, so now if I wanted to, to uh, contact you to help me with whatever my business is, like what, what would take place? So what I do, I give a, what they call a voice to the small in a business owner. And what I do, the first thing I do is I sit down with you and we flush out a media plan and we do a deep dive on your company. We find out uh, what your dreams and aspirations are. We do a deep research summary. Who are your competitors? What are your key messages? What are your taglines? Who's your, who's your actual key market? Who's your stakeholders? It's like there's so many layers. Okay. It takes about two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, I do do a break with my clients in the middle because they get tired. Uh, and I flush it all out and then we design a plan to see what is it their big end goals, what are their three to four month goals, and we come up with tactics and, and uh, solutions on how to go about getting reaching these milestones. So how many companies have on average like have you worked with so far. Can you figure that out. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd have to count them all. Oh, quite a few. Um, yeah. Well, I, and I work for uh, Langara Film Arts and Langara Journalism Program through Langara. And uh, I've done, I've worked on a podcast for uh, two uh, psychiatrists. They were mm -hmm. lovely ladies. And I worked with a country music singer in Nova Scotia. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really fun. And I like country music. I like all music. So right. um, it was really fun because um, it was a different technology for him. With his postings on social media, I would embed some of the songs so people would get a taste of them. So that was quite fun to do that. Right. And um, lots of a few feature films. I've done a couple of Kickstarters. I worked on a Kickstarter in November and in 12 hours, we raised over $30,000. And in one month, we raised $85,000. Oh, that's that is for it's an amazing film. I mean, the project is fantastic to get behind. It's a documentary film called Lost in the Shuffle. Um, it has, if you like magicians, you're going to love that movie. So look it up. It's really worth looking into. Um, but yeah, $85,000 in one month. That was really exciting working on that campaign. Um, I worked on another feature film from the same company uh, called um, All Joking Aside, which was a really fun movie about a stand-up comic. And what stand-up comics do to, in their struggle to, you know, become stand-up comics. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so uh, there's quite a few. I've worked with many different, mostly in the entertainment industry. Um, I think it's just because that's my background and sure. that's my network, but open to many different, uh, you know, if, if I can help the person, if I feel it's a right fit, then yeah. I, and then I will. Right. Yeah. But well, that sounds awesome. Uh, now I don't, uh, what I do, I do for free, but let's just say that here I am, I have a talk show, you know, I, I interview, interview show um, and I want to broaden my market or, or actually get paid, whatever it is. So let's just, if we can do a mock, sort of a mock uh, flushing, what would you suggest for somebody 
like in my well, position. Well, first of all, Patreon, because that's how you make money uh, on YouTube and with podcasts is number one, you want to start a Patreon page. Patreon, um, never, never even heard of it. Patreon? <laughs> um, it's, it's really amazing. The CEO was an artist that, um, you know, wanted to do what he wanted to do without having a day job uh, to put all his um, energy into getting paid for doing art. Mm. Uh, so he created this company and it took right off. And it's really cool because it's um, a company for creatives, created by creatives, run by creatives. Um, absolutely check it out. Patreon is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And with your Patreon account, uh, they have different um, tiers. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could have, so if someone joins for $5 a month, you could offer them um, you know, a shout out on YouTube, if someone, you know, like there's all these different levels If someone did like $25, you send them a t-shirt. Right. Uh, so there's many different layers. Um, if you Google, um, if you go to the YouTube channel uh, and, um, or even just Google the CEO of Patreon, he has so many videos that explains how to do it and great ideas. Mm -hmm. So Patreon would be how you would make money from it. What, that's the first step. Right. Um, and then we'd have to come up with a marketing plan um, I would do a deep, deep dive in your company. Like I said, I would uh, interview you and really find out who you are, why you're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, for a mock one, it, like, it's, it's hard to say because it's, it's a deep, deep dive and it's quite personal and it's not something you'd want other people to hear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, pretend like this is, you know, I mean, you can tell my age when I don't even know what Patreon is. You know? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with age. I'll tell you, like, and, and, and you know, there's something I always hear people say, and I think it's a terrible thing because a lot of people don't realize this, but baby boomers are the largest market on online. Oh, um, everybody okay. thinks it's millennials. It's not. Millennials actually are not big on technology. Gen Zs are, absolutely. But the thing is, it's also, let's throw the demographics out the window. People are people. Some yeah. people love technology like me. I have friends the same age. I've got friends that are younger, friends that are older, can't stand it. I've got friends that are in their 70s, love technology no yeah. more than I do. Right. So never say at my age, it's just you haven't heard about it yet. You haven't come across it. You're right. Yeah. So, and I, and I always feel like, it's so one of the biggest things I work with on my clients is their self-esteem. And I constantly hear them put themselves down uh, as a small business owner. When you're struggling, if you make a mistake, it seems to be this first reaction is you're like, Oh, why didn't I know that? I'm so stupid. Or oh, mm -hmm. I should have thought of that. And I messed up. That's the first thing you got to stop is stop that narrative. Right. Um, I really try to build up a uh, small business owners self-esteem because you're out here by yourself. I mean, you're literally selling yourself as a product. Right. Nancy guitar, you're selling Nancy guitar. Like what's your brand? Who do, what do you represent? What are your beliefs? What are your ideologies? Mm -hmm. Who would you have on the show? Who wouldn't you have on the show? Where do you want it to go? Like, so these are all layers of, mm -hmm. that are part of it. So never say, Oh, at my age, I would know. You just don't know. <laughs> hadn't come across it yet. I hadn't heard of it when I started. <laughs> right yes that's true yes you're right so yeah but that's the thing i do with small business owners i get them to start believing in themselves right now do big do any big businesses come to you for like more you know help them expand or whatever yeah, i've been approached but i won't work with this big businesses there's enough big agencies out there huh. that are really happy to work with the big companies that's not it's not my interest right. i want to work with small business owners and the self-employed mm -hmm. to help them to the next level and i've worked with people that i help them to they got bigger and they didn't need me anymore and i helped them get in the, the door of the bigger agency right. um, if i wanted to work with a bigger agency uh, that's where i'd go but i don't want to i like what i do at the level that i'm doing it at and i like i love working with people who have a business idea mm -hmm. and they don't even know how to get started and helping them grow it and develop it. So they're getting clients and they're working. Like it's so exciting to watch yes. or someone who's self-employed and they, they're, they they want to make more than $20,000 a year. They want to really make a go of it and make it their main stream of income. Um, that's exciting to work with, it, with people like that. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, you feel like you're giving them a gift because you're helping them grow and you're helping them believe in themselves. One of my clients right now, um, I'm actually teaching her how to use social media on her own right. um, because she's not in a situation that she can keep me on forever and ever and ever. Um, and it's been so much fun watching this individual blossom. When we started, she was doing that mantra. Oh, I don't know this. And I know I'm terrible at technology. And I was like, stop saying that now. She's like, like unbelievable. She's like, she's so intuitive that now when I go to ask her a question, she already knows. So she said, Oh, this is what I do. And it's so exciting to give. It's like, you know, the saying, teach a woman to fish 
I'm sorry, a man, a person <laughs> to fish, you know, they'll fish for the yeah. rest of them, right? And, yes. and that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to do is most mm. of my contracts are, um, I offer four months to start, uh, but I have a few clients, they never want to leave. I've had them said, nope, I'm staying with you forever and ever and ever. And that's great. I love yeah. that. And then yeah. I have clients that come to me that they really, they're in a position, they really just want to learn how to do it for themselves. So I teach them and then they're independent from me. All right. That's awesome. I, I really, it sounds so exciting. It really does, you know? It really is. I really enjoy it. I love what I do. It's, yeah. Um, I'm so blessed because um, having multiple streams of income that you really enjoy, it really doesn't feel like work. Um, I mean, I get to act, I get to work with like famous actors and directors. Yeah. Um, and then I get to go and I get to work in technology and help people and individuals grow their, their, their companies and make themselves financially independent. And in a really honest, ethical way, because uh, there's certain companies and clients I won't work with. Like you mm -hmm. have to be ethical for me to work with you. Mm -hmm. um, the social marketing is all about moving people forward in society through ethical means. Um, so like, I, oh, I've worked with nonprofits even. That's another one uh, in climate okay. change. And uh, like, I don't know. I like to feel like maybe in some small way, I'm making a little change in the world for yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I can't do it in a big way because I'm, I'm not that I'm nobody. So it, um, it, it feels good to, to help other people. Yeah. I feel the same way. Like that's why I do this, yeah. right. You know, people give people a platform to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about or promote their business or whatever. Yeah. It does feel good. And one of the, and it's always speak to somebody who like, who like you, who really enjoys what they're doing, what they do is so exciting. I absolutely yeah. love speaking to people like you because it's catchy. It's contagious. <laughs> you know, I, do. I try to inspire the people. And I shouldn't say things like even just what I said right now, I'm nobody. Well, I'm not nobody. I am. Okay. somebody. Uh, I heard you. Like, yeah. Well, business owner, we do that, right? Like we're yes. so um, it's just, it feels good to impact people's lives in a positive way. And this is my way of doing it. Yeah. And no. I get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, has, has um, Zoom opened up a whole new world for you like it has for me? Absolutely, because I had a lot of people that they're like, oh, you know, like, because um, social media is not important. I'm going to get my employee's teenage daughter to do it, or um, I'm going to like the person on the front desk, they're going to handle it. And when the lockdowns happened, they realized that social media is literally your advertising. It is the face of your company and handing it over to someone who's treating it like something on the side of their desk is not the right move. And also so many companies needed to get online. And they didn't know how, and they didn't know how to pivot. So I helped a lot of people. That was something I offered during the pandemic that I would literally show people how to get set up to, to pivot their company to being online. Right. Well, that's really good. Now let's get back to the, to, to the film for just a second. Um, do you have any new, so, any new films coming up that you're going to be part of? No, I'm just auditioning right now. Um, I that the projects that are out now, I worked on those all last year. So okay. uh, just auditioning and uh, hopefully working soon. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good. Uh, and do you have a website, by the way, for your business? I or do. It's EPL Social Marketing. Okay, nice and simple. You can just Google it. Yeah, and it's, you'll see that I believe there's one that has a similar name, but they're in Australia. I am the only... Uh, EPL social marketing and I'm at, I'm at dot com. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you doing this. This has really been fun listening to oh, you. Thank and you for enjoy. having me on the show. Oh, it's, it's my thank pleasure. You. And uh, to the audience, I just want to say that I'm going to put uh, Elizabeth's information down there. If you want to contact her, I think it would be a wonderful access. What's the word I want? Help for I'm your done. business. <laughs> Sometimes I have trouble with my words. And, and you know, even if someone just has a really good business idea and they just okay. want to call to say, do you think that I could make this a go? I'm really honest. Oh, good. Um, and it, but it's amazing how many people don't think they have a great idea. Like uh, yeah. one person I know, she's a professional writer. She's written books. Um, she's made documentaries. Um, during getting close, like when things started to shut down and she couldn't travel to do her documentary, she thought, you know, I'd like to tutor. I'd like, and because it's also 
not just for the income stream. It's also because she really likes kids. Right. She also yeah. really loves teaching people English because she travels so much to different countries. Um, she wanted to help people with, the, you know, with English language who it's not their first language. Um, and I said, you can totally do that. And we brainstormed and she has it as a side business now. Awesome. So, you, you never, that that idea, like, oh, I'd like to do this. You don't have to join an MLM. You can actually come up with your own company. Right. And with that being said, everybody, like, uh, yeah, I just hope you enjoyed hearing all this information from Elizabeth and um, check it out, check her business out. And if you've got a plan, like she said, if you've got a plan, approach her and she'll give you some really honest information, which is what all business, if you're starting up, that's what you need to hear, honesty. And in the meantime, have fun and peace out, everybody. Hi, Nancy. Thank you so much. You're welcome. A sense of community to the wax of place to be. A sense of community where you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chilliwax, a place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwax, a place to be, you'll see.